Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you are new, uh, welcome to you. And if you are um, returning, an equally warm welcome to you. And uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video and uh, many of my other videos on the Trading 180 channel with your fellow trading colleagues. And at Trading 180, we use a combination of fundamental risk sentiment and uh, technical analysis, supply and demand, um, strategies to make really the best trading decisions and so let's get into um, the uh, the week ahead and uh, starting off on tradingeconomics.com and the calendar uh, actually it's not really the calendar it's really the week ahead uh, section on on um, uh, trading economics so after uh, a turbulent half of the year investors will look to continue for signs of a potential recession as interest rates around the globe increase so the US jobs report and FOMC minutes will take center stage next week but comments from ECB President Lagarde and the RBA interest rate decision in China services PMI and inflation will also be keenly watched so definitely those are the, the main highlights for the week and of course if you go to tradingeconomics.com and look at the week ahead tab um, you can uh, just read the uh, the rest for yourself which gets into the nitty gritty so let's get into some of the charts and some fundamental analysis some more fundamentals and uh, starting off on the dollar index and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against um, major currencies like the euro the pound and the yen and um, what we've seen really with the dollar index and I don't necessarily trade the dollar index but I keep an eye on it um, and, and understanding over what's like I said dollar strength um, is, uh, is is a lot of traders think that you know the price of the dollar should come down and I, and I do think that at some point um, we will start to look to probably enter into what is known as a range but should be known as an auction where prices are trading kind of sideways between an agreed value between what is really expensive and what is potentially a bargain and I do think that it's you know likely to stay between the 101s and the 105s or the, the, the lower end of the 106s is just below that um, of course, can't be 100%, not, not necessarily, you know, 100%. This is what is going to happen. But there are reasons for the dollar looking to potentially trail off. And one of them um, is recession talk, right? Now, um, this is um, the IMF is saying that the US will narrowly avoid a recession in 2022 and 2023. So the US economy's path to skirt recession is narrowing, MD says, and Fed's plan to get rates to 3.5 to 4% is correct policy. So uh, getting into the first you know, couple of uh, paragraphs, the US economy is likely to slow in 2022 and 2023, but will narrowly avoid recession as the Federal Reserve implements its, fed, its rate tightening plan to curb inflation, the International Monetary Fund said, and the policy priority now must be to expeditiously slow wage and price growth without precipitating a recession, the IMF said in a statement on Friday. This would be a tricky task as global supply constraints and domestic labor shortages are likely to persist and the war in Ukraine creates additional uncertainty. So there are, you know, some, some risks involved in this. And um, my opinion is that pretty much all um, major economies, you know, what we talk about, um, you know, the G10 in the G10 are probably going to enter into some sort of, I think, um, a close recession or into a recession. But I think the US potentially is best placed. But as we get closer to the end of the year, I think, and into next year, um, I think the dollar, um, you know, may start to um, uh, tail off as far as strength wise if you look at the you know from a technical analysis perspective of course technicals lag fundamentals and um, you know we've seen the dollar strength and this has really been due to monetary policy and the dollar being the best of a bad bunch right um, so I do think that uh, the dollar is still a buy to be fair in, in the short term so any pullbacks to any kind of demand zones I think are still biased where my bias is um, I don't think it's necessarily going to, you know, reverse and start to, you know, crash like a lot of people think it is. Um, 
but of course I could be wrong I have to wait for you know the data to kind of prove that but for me I still think that a pullback into um, any kind of demand zones but I think the upside is limited I'm not saying it's limited to the 105s but um, I think that's probably where we are now unless there is some really kind of outstanding news um, and economic data for the uh, for the US uh, economy but for now I think um, we're probably seeing you know upside potential or um, uh, coming in uh, to play right now but any pullbacks I think any dollar pullbacks are I think are still buying opportunities until proven otherwise uh, moving on to the dollar yen and the dollar yen you know is pulling back to a demand zone which is technically right here now um, you've obviously seen this uh, these two blue moving averages and that's the uh, monthly moving fair value uh, known as moving averages um, 21 period because there's 21 days um, uh, in a month I mean a trading month anyway and um, one of the things that I look for is its value right and uh, we need to know how to measure fair value as well because um, you don't really want to buy expensive areas you want to buy the minimum you want to buy is a fair value right so understanding what an average is an average is a mean a mean um, if, if between um, you know a high and a low point high being expensive and a low being potential bargain right is also can be considered it's supposed to be a B fair value right that's fair value so um, fair value can be measured in many different ways but taking the price over the last uh, you know month um, we're still above the fair value area so for me personally I you know I personally don't like to trade um, uh, above areas of fair value which may may be expensive and so I have a bit of a rule which says anything above uh, fair value I'm not trading because again if you're looking at where we come from here to all the way up at the highs um, uh, that being an absolute bargain and that being an expensive area because there's no more demand at the moment above that zone um, I want to wait for pullbacks, so decent pullbacks, so at least a fair value into the lower end of this zone, the 134s, before looking for a trade. And of course, um, you know, looking at uh, you know the, the intraday going down into the you know potential one hour, thirty minute, and that would you know line up nicely with that zone here. Personally, though, I do like the 132s, 133s, 1350s. It would be an even better buy. So anything beyond that monthly fair value would be considered a potential. Uh, bargain price um, so again my bias is to the upside the yen um, is um, a, a currency that generally does typically strengthen in a risk off environment but the market at the moment I think is being more driven or has been more driven lately towards um, you know monetary policy rather than in divergences in monetary policy rather than risk sentiment although there are again risk issues um, global recession potential but I still think that the dollar does um, well again in, in a risk off environment so I think personally the earliest place to kind of look for any kind of trades would be at the 13426 um, but I would prefer anything below the uh, um, uh, uh, this demand zone, especially if it comes down to the one three one four nine area. If it comes anywhere around there, I think that's going to be a decent uh, buying opportunity. <clears throat> but if you want to also get short, there is a supply zone, not the strongest supply zone at the moment, but there is something sitting right on top of that demand zone. Um, so if you do, if you are waiting for some sort of pullback into that zone before getting short, there's some, there's a, no, I say it's okay, it's all right for us for a sell, but you'd have to really understand why you're looking to buy the Japanese yen. And the only reason why I would be buying the Japanese yen is if the uh, the Bank of Japan um, start to indicate that they are um, intervening in the market, which um, I'm not really going to explain in in this video. I guess I might do it during the week or release a video as to why. Um, uh, you know the, the the central bank intervention as far as the J bank of japan intervening may want to cause the uh, the yen to uh, to strengthen or why they don't want it to weaken you know maybe anywhere above the the actual one 140s right which we're slowly approaching uh moving on to the canadian dollar sorry the uh, dollar swiss franc and the swiss franc has obviously been strengthening 
um, recently because of the surprise rate hike. Um, I do think I do think that there are um, you know selling opportunities technically not really a pair I'm interested in but if you do want to be a buy a buyer of the Swiss franc against the dollar then I think the upper end of this area is going to be quite nice for a uh, sell but uh, if you do want to be a buyer prices did come down into this demand zone uh, and bounce off uh, uh, during the week on what was that Wednesday so there was a decent buying opportunity but for me fundamentally I'm not really um, uh, prepared to uh, to look for buying opportunities on two I would say one strong currency and one recently, um, you know, strong currency or turning strong anyway due to uh, um, uh, monetary policy, uh, especially the uh, surprise. So the market is pricing in what the uh, Swiss franc should be valued at in the next uh, maybe three to six months. And it could be a bit lower, but let's see, but not really a pair that I'm I'm interested in. The dollar CAD, dollar CAD prices came down last week into this demand zone kind of spiked through and then you know there was an opportunity for a potential buy um again two currencies where central banks are looking to high crates um again not really a pair i'm looking for i tend to look for uh either divergences in policy right where currency is getting stronger another one is getting weaker based on monetary policy divergence or some sort of convergence right um, where a, a devalued currency is looking to revalue and where a, a, a currency that was appreciating uh, is actually has to, has to kind of devalue. So, um, you know, with that being said, I think the uh, dollar CAD for me, again, not really something I'm interested in right now. Although I do think that um, that may change if the risk on if the risk on environment does come into play i think the canadian dollar will strengthen and i think the uh this will be a, a a sell trade so i'm not really a buyer of the um of the dollar us dollar against the canadian dollar but if risk starts to come back on um then i will be a potential buyer of the canadian dollar um and i'll decide whether it won't or whether i want to be a, a, a against the uh um the us dollar because there are weaker pairs out there to be fair um but again decent um trading areas i think i'll just pull that down to around here not the strongest area of demand to be fair but if prices do come back down um, into this and then you get like some sort of intraday entry then that could be decent for a potential upside and then all you do is you zoom down into you know a lower time frame and look for any kind of a buying opportunity around here um, New Zealand dollar US dollar on the daily um, again we haven't quite broken through that demand zone um, we can readjust this though I think probably something like that and then we've also got um, supply zone here now again commodity currencies don't do well in a risk off environment the US dollar I was saying this last week the path of least resistance is to the downside um, for the for, for this currency pair because because commodity currencies tend to suffer um, the US dollar obviously uh, benefit in a risk off environment and you've seen what's you know happened um, pullbacks I guess if you want to be a buyer with the New Zealand dollar, they are hiking. Um, they're in their hiking cycle, so the downside should be probably limited. But I don't really like this. Again, I don't really like this pair too much. Again, I'd probably say the bias for now in a risk-off environment should really be to the to the short side. So any uh, short trades, you know, at the one uh, six three, probably the one six four. Uh, um, 164 064 um, cent number I think is probably going to be the better area to look for any kind of short trades plus as well it's it would be above the uh, uh, monthly fair moving fair value um, the pound dollar this is something that I am definitely interested in and again um, saying that was waiting really for a bit of a pullback to come into the market but just didn't get one but doesn't matter anyway because there will be there's always pullbacks and if prices do pull back to this area the one two three fifties one two fours i think that is going to be a very nice area for a potential short trade um 
there's been a talk about the uh, in the medium to long term, you know, the 118s. So if we can get if the dollar can weaken a bit, you know what I mean, and uh, we can get a bit of a pullback into that, you know, 122.60s to 124s, I think there's going to be um, definitely an opportunity for. Um, for a potential uh, sell trade as I'm still um, you know bearish on the pound um, looking at the pound um, fundamentals soaring inflation to hit Britain harder than any other major economy Bank of England warns right so um, the soaring inflation will hit Britain harder than any other major Bank of England I'm sorry any other major economy during the current energy crisis uh, the governor of the Bank of England has warned Andrew ba Bailey said the UK's economy would likely weaken earlier and be more intense than others as a result of the energy price shock that all European economies face the situation was further exacerbated by in, in Britain by the structural legacy left by COVID in the labour market as companies struggled with a lack of workers so if that doesn't tell you everything you need to know about you know going short on the pound not financial advice of course um, and I don't know where you're going short but I've got my uh, trade setups um, you know beyond this, uh, this just this uh, this video um, in the private members group which I share with those guys and setups that we that we use um, from stop hunts to capture pain relief uh, as well as obviously daily supply and demand uh, again, my bias is still to the short side, so uh, let's see what happens with the pound dollar. Any pullbacks for me are short in opportunities. Um, Euro dollar, similar bias. Actually, I say similar, but the same bias. Um, we have, um, you know, for me, getting uh, short, and I did get short uh, this week. It was a nice stop hunt. A few people got involved right at the highs, got a pinpoint entry. Um, and took prior to profits anyway around the 104 I think it must have been maybe the one one oh four four yeah somewhere around here anyway um, so it was a nice um, uh, maybe about 150 170 pip move um, uh, in in the group a lot of traders uh, caught that as well and uh, again we have the uh, monthly uh, moving fair value acting as uh, resistance there um, so we knew it was basically a, at least fair value from where we wanted to get involved in this trade now um, Europe right are in the spotlight this week and uh, Europe's ECB's high wire act to deliver rate liftoff enters final stretch so officials meet in full um, last full week before pre-decision blackout and size of rate moves designed uh, design of crisis tool may be in play so now officials have seen June's record inflation reading judged to be pivotal for their next monetary move they'll convene Wednesday for the final scheduled opportunity to prepare for two day for their two day meeting starting July the 20th and with all major eurozone data out in the open and key gatherings including an annual retreat out of the way policymakers can focus on haggling over the size of rate hikes and the design of an anti-crisis measure yeah so it's basically an anti-fragmentation tool so um the you know european union are suffering from what's known as uh, fragmentation so they might be hiking rates but um the effect of the uh, hike um may be uneven across you know the 19 european countries so um which may cause fragmentation you know with the economies as some economies can um you know maybe cope with uh, interest rate hikes and others can't right so um let's see what happens um there um as well as you know problems uh jp morgan sees stratospheric 380 dollar oil on worst case russian cut yeah crazy um so a global um uh global oil prices could reach stratospheric 380 dollars a barrel if you were if us and european penalties prompt russia to inflict retaliatory retaliatory crude uh, output cuts JP Morgan Chase and co analysts warn and um, we also can see if it comes up here we go Germany risks imminent recession on gas cut off Deutsche Bank says so um, you got JP Morgan and Deutsche Bank 
um, you know, worried about obviously uh, oil and gas and energy and uh, Europe faces big negative supply shock on Russian gas and analysts warn energy turmoil to hurt growth and weaken the euro right so there's the direct correlation so european economies are facing a major new shock from slowing deliveries of russian natural gas which threatened to push inflation even higher than the current record levels and drive the continent's powerhouse germany into imminent recession deutsche bank said so with all that being said again uh, you know it's it's currency trading at especially at the moment is all about you know dog with the least fleas who's the best of the worst and um at the moment as much as you know the focus might be on the us dollar recession i think the europe in a much worse position so any pullbacks um to any kind of supply zones uh, for me are uh, are shorting opportunities uh, even better still i think the 107s even though um the european central bank might be hiking rates uh, they are hiking into uh, a lot of weakness at the moment. And there's again, there's even talk of potential parity, um, you know, one to one uh, euro dollar uh, rate, which is probably at the moment around 400 uh, pips, um, you know, to the downside or 300. Yeah, it's about 400 pips to the downside. So I think if um, if there's a, if there is a pullback, I do think I'm I want to be a shorter again, and this time I'm going to end up holding the trade and seeing how far it can run. Um, Aussie dollar, Aussie dollar again, commodity currencies suffering in a risk-off environment. The U.S. dollar being you know the stronger out of the two. Although I am a buyer of the Australian dollar, and I am in the um, I'm in the dollar um, Aussie uh, yen. Um, trade which has uh, actually been profitable on the Friday but um, what we see against the dollar um, is should I I'll get rid of this uh, demand zone and it's more we're seeing a really kind of supply come in at these areas and um, if you are looking for a potential buy and buy in the Australian dollar you'd have to I think you'd have to really kind of see um, uh, risk on start to take place i do think downside is uh, limited due to a potential larger uh, um, rba uh, rate hike so we could see some downside potential uh, limited and this could actually just be a, a decent buying opportunity based off of that alone so let's see um but for now i think again the path of least resistance is probably to the downside um, and any basically trades that come up up above that one oh um, sorry that seventy cent area above the uh, the fair value the moving uh, monthly moving fair value is going to be a decent buying opportunity for the dollar if you want to be a buyer of the dollar uh, against the Australian dollar. Um, but again, any kind of setups for a buy um, uh, from a supply and demand perspective, I don't think there's really. Let me zoom out a bit now. Nah, I don't think there's unless you're taking unless you're taking a, a, a the potential demand zone from way back in 2020, then um, no, I think you'd have to wait for proof of value, to wait for price to really kind of prove that there is uh, you know strong demand first, and then wait for a pullback into that zone before looking at getting long. I think that's really the way to to kind of play it. Um, and moving on to the Aussie yen and um, yeah so um, managed to get involved in a nice uh, stop hunt around this uh, 91 uh, 50s uh, 60s 70s area which is actually uh, paid off quite nicely but that's beyond the uh, I guess the um, the scope of this video as I talk about supply and daily supply and demand zones but um, I'm gonna keep the zone here matter of fact keep that zone there demand and um, from a buying opportunity you can look towards the lower time frames and look for any kind of buying opportunities um, if you believe that the Australian dollar is, is, is a bargain here it was obviously a bargain at that point in time so potentially we could start to see prices move to the upside um, if not and prices move further down then I think this 90 uh, cent area is going to be quite nice 
um, or 90 dollar area is going to be quite nice um, as, a, as a buying opportunity especially around the 89 88 to 87 30s I think that's very nice for a, a potential buy but let's see what happens in a risk-off environment you would expect the um, the, uh, the 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 yen to do well but I think um, at the moment with uh, potential rate hikes coming I think there should be some at least some potential upside uh, first before we start to see any moves down or it could be the other way around right we could see some moves down before we see you know a move up so but either way my bias is uh, to buy the Australian dollar um, and continue to buy the Australian dollar for now um, and we also have finally gold and gold nice buying opportunity here on that daily time frame chart um, I did say last week that price has come down to this uh, 1784. That's a nice buying opportunity. Um, strangely enough, gold has been um, not doing so well in the risk-off environment. Um, there's there's many reasons for that or potential reasons for that. But um, uh, central banks are buying gold. So um, if you believe that the uh, there's recessions all around. Um, gold it should be something that you should be buying. It should be something uh, in all portfolios really as a hedge. So um, for me, gold is a buy, and uh, I do think potentially this could still come down. But with with the dollar looking to um, with the U.S. dollar anyway. Uh, if that starts to um, weaken a bit and pull back, then you can, you probably could see the dollar start to, sorry, gold start to uh, strengthen. So let's see what happens there. A lot of, you know, recession talk, fear uh, should want to drive gold to the upside. So any, you know, from now anyway, I think a buying opportunity, anything lower than this is starting to definitely turn into, you know, definitely bargain opportunities. I think smart money is definitely getting involved down there as well. Um, anyways, guys, I think that's pretty much it for this week. And um, yeah, take care. Uh, and I hope you have a great trading week and uh, speak to you all soon.